Hello everyone. Welcome to this online class. In this video we shall discuss about factors affecting air pressure. As we have discussed in a previous video about the concept of air pressure and we know that air has weight. So, atmospheric pressure primarily depends upon three factors. The first one is altitude, second one is temperature and third one is rotation of the earth. So, speaking about altitude, as we know that on moving towards higher altitude or high places, the air pressure decreases. We have already discussed air pressure decreases with the increase in altitude. Right. So, how does it happen? On a bridge, air pressure decreases at the rate of about 34 millibars per 300 meters of altitude. So, remember this term that air pressure decreases at the rate of about 34 millibars per 300 meters of altitude. So, there is a diagram over there you can see is well explained. Actually, this is one diagram, but separately explained. You could see the first diagram that the high pressure and low pressure. The low latitude, the down part of the diagram is a bit smaller. Defining molecules get closer together and outward pressure increases. So, when surface of the earth, the molecules are close together, they get closer and they are compact. So, that is why pressure is high on the surface of the earth. But when you move towards the upper altitude, the second diagram you could see that the molecules get farther apart and outward pressure decreases. So, the upper diagram you could see it bit, it is bit uh, bigger than this down one. So, what happens? It is expanding, the molecules get further apart, making low pressure at the height. Generally, the air pressure is low in the upper layer of atmosphere as compared to lower layers. So, lower layers, there is another reason for this because of the gravity, the air is confined towards the surface of the earth and on moving towards the higher level, it is less. This is because the air is composed of gases and this is highly compressible. The lower layers of atmosphere are compressed and denser as compared to upper layers. So, the lower layer of the earth surface air is compressed as compared to the upper layer. Upper layer is not compressed, it is free moving and it is wide apart of the molecules. We have studied about convections. So, when convections the air rises up, as the air becomes light they rise up. So, on moving towards the higher level they also lose their air pressure. When air rises up the molecules get farther apart and outward pressure decreases whereas in the lower layers in the compressed state the molecules get close together and outward pressure increases. It follows that when air sinks, its pressure increases, in sinking the volume of air decreases, but number of molecules remains the same. So, when the air sinks, that means when it moves upper layer and again comes down, it, it descends. So, what happens? The pressure is increasing but the volume of the air decreases. Why it happens so? Because the number of molecules remains the same. 
the number of molecules remain the same. So, due to this factor, the air pressure increases nearby the surface of the earth and air pressure decreases in the upper layer of the atmosphere. Thus, the outward pressure of these molecules is confined to a smaller areas, hence the layer of air is dense. So, the surface of the earth, the air molecules are confined to smaller areas. As we could see the diagram, it, it is confined to smaller areas due to this factor, the air is dense. On other hand, when air rises, its volume increases as it expands and the pressure decreases. So, when it rises off, it expands and there is a decrease of pressure. As we go higher, atmospheric pressure decreases because the air in the lower layer of the atmosphere is denser than at higher level. So, another point is that on moving towards the higher level, the air decreases, but in the lower layer of the atmosphere is denser. This is because of the gravity, the magnetic pull of the earth which attracts the molecules of air and other atmospheric gases downward to the ground. So, this is because due to the gravity, the air molecules attracts to the surface of the earth and moving towards the higher level it is less. The upper layer rests on the lower layers thus exerting pressure on the earth's surface. So, you could see the upper layer different layers they rest on the lower layer of the atmosphere. So, definitely the lower layer will be having the more pressure. You could say example suppose uh, books are kept together on table and suppose you take 13, 14 books are arranged and kept. The down notebook is difficult to take it out because of the pressure that is exerted from the notebooks that is kept over there. So, the notebooks of the upper layer is very easy to take it up because it is not having that much of pressure. But the down uh, of the notebooks are having the pressure on it. Similarly, as the upper layer of the air rests on the lower layer of the air, there is a more pressure on the lower layer. The next one is about the temperature, how the temperature makes difference or how the temperature influences the air pressure. We have talked about the altitude, now let us talk about temperature. Temperature is universally related to pressure, that means if there is high pressure is due to the low temperature and if it is low pressure due to the high temperature, it is universally related. It is because with the rise in temperature, air gets heated and rises up. As it expands, it creates a low pressure area. When temperature is low, the air becomes heavier and denser. So, less temperature, high pressure and more temperature, low pressure. Due to this factor, the wind blows from high pressure to low pressure. Always the moment of wind or moment of air is high pressure to low pressure. So, you could see the diagram of the effect of temperature on pressure. The area nearby the equator due to the high temperature and the area nearby the polar areas due to the low temperature. So, nearby the polar areas it will be having the high pressure and nearby the equator it will be having the low pressure. The next point is influence of rotation of earth on pressure. How the rotation of the earth influences the 
pressure as we know earth moves west to east it rotates west to east so due to this factor there is a movement of air as well the rotation of the earth causes air at the poles to be pushed towards the equator there is high pressure on the poles because of low temperature so nearby the polar areas it is high pressure due to the low temperature so due to the rotation of the earth the polar areas wind will be pushing toward the equator because of the rotation the air coming down from the poles occupies more space as it expands and its pressure falls this low pressure belts are along parallels of 60 degree north and 60 degree south air always moves from high pressure towards low pressure so that is the fact that air always move from high pressure to low pressure therefore as air moves away from the poles air moves in the higher level to take its place so we have another term that is correlated force we have already uh, learned about this that any object or fluid moving in the northern hemisphere will deflect or turn towards right side and in the southern hemisphere any object any fluid will be moving towards in certain directions will turn towards left directions or it will be deflecting towards left direction this is because of the correlated force in the polar areas the correlated force is more but the correlated force is absent at the equator but increases as we go towards the poles so this were the few points or three factors that affect the air pressure first one is altitude second one is temperature and third one is rotation of the earth the altitude as we move towards the higher level the air pressure decreases temperature the more temperature less pressure or low pressure and less temperature high pressure and regarding the rotation of the earth in the polar areas due to the low temperature it is high pressure and on the equator it is low pressure due to the high temperature and also there is a term correlated force that any object any any fluid moves in any directions in the northern hemisphere will be deflecting or uh, directing or turning towards the right side and in southern hemisphere it will be deflecting or turning towards left side i hope you understood this concept any doubt any queries please do ask and those who have not watched the previous video please do watch it understand properly thoroughly watch it again and again watch and try to understand this concept thank you so much have a nice day god bless you